unfortunate. Bet you that's a man on that skateboard. <laughs> The female gaze is the female point of view. Feminine, femme perspective. She'll watch a movie and you'll have like the three male leads, you know everything about them and who they are as people. And then you have like the two female characters and they probably take their top off at some point. It is flipping that trope and really still using the trope, but to our advantage. I AD'd the second episode and then ended up directing Two episodes. It was a majority female crew and cast, and because of that, I knew that I felt super safe and accepted. And it is a reflection of what our world looks like. Like our world isn't distinctly just one gender, one race. And so far, most of the female characters I've seen growing up have been pretty um, one-dimensional. You're not really seeing what's happening with them, what they're going through, and I think it's really important to see that. They're not just one note, we live lives, we're messy, we're fun, we have many relationships. Women are human, <laughs> and I think that a lot of times we forget that. It's like people and then women. There's a blog with just a bunch of casting notices for women. I don't know if you've ever looked at it, but if you go through, 99.9% .9 of them are like, she was pretty, but didn't know it. Having a show that is directed by, written by, uh, prominently featuring female crew helps to make sure that females are actually being portrayed accurately and not just as these one-dimensional things that you can have sex with. You could relate to Priya's insecurity about boys, or you could relate to Jen's insecurity about her job, or about just being in a relationship. Having female directors is super important because women have a different point of view based on their own experiences and their own lives. Women will know how to direct women. You know, you can tell when a man is directing a woman's story or writing a woman's story. With the female gaze, like, you didn't have to like, put on that armor. You could just be your complete self. The scene where Priya is discovering more about her sexuality, I think is really important because um, it's an experience that a lot of people have felt. There is no right way, there is no wrong way, there is no way to have a relationship or to have a friendship with someone. If you're lesbian, bisexual, queer, asexual, like anything really, you know, like there is no way, there's no proper way to have, you know, a loving, wonderful relationship. I think a lot of times when you watch film or TV that has LGBT characters, you get their coming out story. Um, but a lot of times when the camera starts rolling, we already see them as knowing who they are, knowing their sexuality, and then coming out from there. I think what was great about the female gaze is we're showing that pivotal moment where Priya's recognizing, oh, maybe I'm not straight. Maybe this is something I need to think about. A strong female friendship that affected me was uh, the relationship in Francis Ha. Shout out to Romy and Michelle of Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. It would be the Golden Girls. I love those girls. <laughs> it's Grace and Frankie. Meredith Grey and Christina Yang and Grey's Anatomy. Thelma and Louise. I just have to say Broad City. Uh, Raven and Chelsea from That's So Raven. One thing that I really like about how the female gaze shows female friendships is we have these two women who are bonding over things more than just the romantic relationships in their life. There aren't as many strong female friendships on TV, so I think the more that we show those strong female friendships that center around so many different aspects is, is incredibly important.